Howdy folks, welcome back to Adventures with Cookie and the Cowboy. I only need three flies to catch trout in the Rocky Mountains. A renegade, a royal coachman, and an elk hair caddis. Forty years ago I really believed that. As a teenager roaming the Rocky Mountains, fishing streams and rivers, that's all I really fished with. Tomorrow morning we're going to start our first in a series of Vintage Angler's Vault. I'm going to take you to a river that I love that I fished as a young teenage boy and I'm gonna have those three flies along and that's all I'm gonna fish with. We're gonna test that theory. We're gonna find out if that teenage boy really knew everything he thought he did. We're gonna have a lot of fun be some beautiful country while I'm at it. So why don't you cinch that saddle down tight, hop in the pirate boat, and tomorrow morning bright and early, join me for a fishing adventure. Well good morning. I'm so glad you made her back to go on this adventure with me. It is bright and early. Sun's just coming up over the horizon. I got a little bit of a drive to get to our spot. Let's get out there. All right, we're here. Upper Provo River in the Uinta National Forest of Northern Utah. Man, do I have some amazing memories of this country over here. Growing up as a teenager, we had a cabin up in this area, and I spent a lot of time hiking down in hip boots to this river. But you know what, this isn't right now. This, this isn't the time to start thinking about all the memories. This is the time to get my gear on, get down to the river, start fishing. I can tell you about the memories and fishing with my three favorite flies while we're catching some trout. Let's get geared up and going. All right, let's get rolling. Got my old fly pack on. Got a little bit of cooler with food and some filming gear. And got the Cabela's four weight. I had my old vintage fly rod and reel that dad taught me on, but man, I just, uh, I'm real hesitant about bringing that down here. I don't fish with it anymore for fear of breaking it. And you know, it's more of a keepsake than anything. So the old Cabela's four weight will take care of the job for us. But. So down there, Provo River. Now this is a little bit lower than I normally get in as a teenager. I'd usually get it up at Soapstone where our cabin was, but there's some construction there. So I'm gonna approach it a little bit lower and work my way up that direction. This is a steep little entrance point, but there is a little bit of a trail off these rocks. So I'm gonna carefully work my way down there and we'll get going. Boy, it is steep going off of here. This is the kind of stuff that a young teenage boy ought to be doing, not a feller getting a few gray hairs in his beard. Fishing's the sort of thing I was known for, never for smart, so we're going to do it. Woo, Nelly! Okay, we're down off of there. Glad I didn't bring Cookie along for that one. By the way, I don't drag her on many of these boondocking trips. She loves to fish and be, go out with me. She does not like hiking through moose-filled willows and down rocky slopes like that quite as much as old cowboy does but uh yeah fortunately i don't have to hike back up this when we get back when we get fishing up the river there's a couple of trails that cut up on top that aren't in that heavier rock at all easier but all right i can see the river i'm pretty dang excited to get thrown out all right we're here upper provo river boy it's beautiful hey we're gonna start this off with a renegade. That was always what I started off with was a kid. It's just something that dad and I used to tie down in the basement and uh, we had a lot of fun fishing it. It's a pretty small one, probably about a size, oh, 16, 14 range. Let's get going and give that a try. No real surprise, but as I'm starting to boondock up this creek, there are all kinds of moose sign, including right here, bed right along the creek. Well, yeah, I'll have to keep an eye out for that. I don't particularly want to disturb Mama Moose and get trampled. I should clarify that last statement as I look at a couple of these holes out in the rocks. But Daddy Moose never gives me any trouble. He just looks at me and walks away. But Mama Moose, boy, they can be grumpy old farts. I know they're tending to their youngins, but my God, they can sure make me dance fast. 
most people fish down lower where I first got out of the car. It slows a bit down through that area. There's some beaver dams and some bunch of logs and good turns and pockets. But there were tracks everywhere. People tracks and moose. But that area had been hit hard, which is a little hard for me to kind of get my head around when because I used to fish this thing when there was hardly any people that would have walked it. But so uh, what I'm doing is I'm hiking upstream and it goes into a narrow canyon area. It is rougher water, faster water, more rock pocket type fishing. I've had a couple of hits. I just haven't been able to hook up. That's been on the El Caracatus. But uh, it is some tough walking. Hopefully I'll get far enough away from that turnout that the fish will start to turn on and we'll have a bit more of a catching time. But until then, I'm going to do this sort of stuff for a bit, it looks like. One of the things that Dad taught me fly fishing down through here was how to work boulders. So we've been working a real rocky, uh, kind of a swifter stretch and just working the slow pockets behind the boulders. But here's a perfect example of what he would show me. If you look right over there, that's a beautiful little pocket over there behind there. You just got to be careful you don't put your shadow in front of it. Got to sneak a little bit. Let's go see if there's one hiding out there. And there we go. Let's get him in there. And there we go, our first fish. And there he goes. Bye bye. <laughs> so the first big surprise was my first fish was a brown trout. Now the lower Provo River is a blue ribbon fishery noted for its just amazing brown trout fishing. So many brown trout per mile is just incredible. But the upper one that I'm in, don't I think I've never caught a brown trout here. It's usually brookie cuts, sometimes rainbows, occasionally a grayling will get flushed down from one of the upper headwaters, and some mountain whitefish. So you know maybe this river's changed a bit since I fished it. The uh, topography from Trial Lake blowing out has changed a bit. There's a lot of blowout rock and it's a little faster than what I remember not quite as many turnout holes I just bushwhack through that really steep hill boots just aren't quite deep enough to get me around this section that reminds me of a very important point of my memories my memories were about amazing hikes beautiful country catching a bunch of fish as a young buck I didn't notice so much how steep the hills were how brushy how much you slipped on rocks and how much balance is kind of slowed down a bit as you got older so that's a good memory to relive it's also good for me to film it so that if i get crazy ideas to hike this again i'll watch the footage and make sure i really want to there are sections of this river that are much more accessible have some great pockets and pools that are really good fishing i just wanted to be away from the crowds today and back in some old haunting areas but i still got a fair bit of steep walking that way to try and get up around this section to the next band. But uh, yeah, let's keep uh, bushwhacking up through that mess right there. <laughs> that is steep. That is very steep. And the 50 year old, 55 year old. Lord have mercy. Look back at that area as I'm walking now for a second. Yeah, it's just steep. And amazing and hard as hell to walk on <laughs> down and go that's about the 15th time I went down as many times as I am old all right it's opening up a little bit I can get back down off of this hill and closer to the creek Woo, Nelly let's try this let's see if I can film my 56th time on my gluteus maximus I about swore I'm a good boy don't do that stuff very often and when I do I mean it got another one in this hole right here Let's see if we can pull him out for you there he is there we go there's another one so they're definitely in here but boy I'm working my butt off for them let's get him released Oh my, I do love this country. This river's got so many fond memories. Hiking down from the cabin we had up the soapstone early in the morning. Dad's fly rod in hand. Fishing some of them big pockets underneath soapstone. 
watching them big old swirls of fish. I was a younger man back then though, I'll have to tell you straight, coming up from the bottom of it here through all these rocks is definitely taxing the old body a bit. Not enough to make me stop, but enough to make me contemplate when is enough to make me stop. And there's another one. We're finally getting the mojo back. Thank goodness, looks like a brookie. Elk hair caddis is getting her done, but boy, I'm working my butt off for these fish. Let's get him up here and release him. That'd be a pretty good eating brookie right there. There he is. Let's see if I can get some light on him. Beautiful colors. Beautiful brookie. Come right out from underneath that rock right there along the shore. Hit that elk hair caddis. Well, I've been hiking up this stream for a bit. Better get me some water and a snack in me. Get these legs a little something to work with. Well, can you believe how beautiful this area is? There's a beautiful little shaded spot. I picked up a couple little ones right there I didn't have the camera running for. Uh, they're just tiny ones, about four inches. But, uh, it's, the fishing's picking up the farther away I get from that parking spot. Of course, the farther away I get, the farther I gotta walk back. One thing that's been absolutely wonderful about this trip, aside from the amazing country, beautiful brookies, reminiscing about the old days. There haven't been hardly any skeeters. Don't tell anybody, there'll be a hundred million people show up here tomorrow morning. Man, it's it's been pretty dang pleasant. A couple, of, a couple of little horse flies here and there and a few mosquitoes, but nothing bad at all. Ah, sitting here reminds me of the good old times up at the cabin though. When we were youngsters, we used to play games and have fun up there, but one of my favorite memories was the, the old uh, porta potty Not the porta potty the old outhouse. That uh, was a hoot. We used to wait till one of my sisters would go out there towards evening tide, and uh, then we'd sneak off to the side there, and we'd get us a big old rock. We'd toss it against the side of that outhouse and make some grizzly bear noises. And Holy crap, you won't believe how fast my sisters can run. That's probably not the best thing to teach you all, huh? But <laughs> that's some good memories. I also remember fishing is probably a couple miles up here when it really opens up and there's a bunch of beaver dams and bigger pockets and a little easier fishing, but I remember having one of my dad's special double renegades. Is it just a renegade with an additional hackle in there and a small red tail on it? big old hole in a beaver pond. I remember as a young kid watching that thing settle out there in what I thought was the perfect cast. Lay out there and then at least let that one fish dry as long as it stayed and then I liked to fish it wet and strip it back. And just as that thing started to sink, I thought it was Jaws come up to hit that thing. I, I was probably only a 14, 16 inch fish, but back in them days, that was even probably my early teens, that old thing looked like a monster. He jumped out of there and hit that thing, and I reeled and squealed and reeled and squealed. And then he popped off. I can remember that. Don't remember a lot these days, but I sure remember that. Well, I'm getting some food and water in me. And uh, up that way there, I see me a nice meadow, so I know we're gonna open up into a few more good holes, and as we starting to open up into them holes, they're treating me better. Got another one. Uh, elk hair cat is still. Get him released. He come out of this little tiny shallow seam. I've been passing up a lot of those and I know I shouldn't, so I'll hit a few more of these as we go. And there he is up close, another nice little brookie. I do. And another one, same spot, just the upper part of that little tail seam. I guess head seam, or the seam, whatever. Beautiful little spot, another little brookie. Nice. You may notice in this little trip down memory lane that I lean really, really heavily on an elk hair caddis. It's my fly I typically go to if I'm not sure what to go to. And that's for small streams and small rivers and the mountains up here. But it's just a, it seems like a good reliable indicator for me and I can fish it when I'm not seeing hatches. I'm not sure what's going on. Uh, yeah, I don't know what else I can say. Everybody's got their kind of favorite things they kind of move off to, and Elkhair Caddis has always been mine. And that one there might be the smallest brookie of the day. Let me get him settled down and released. But yeah, 
just uh, again another little seam right above that tail pocket up there that we were fishing a few minutes ago but uh, yeah that's a teeny one all right this is a this is not particularly the ones we're looking for we're starting to pick a bunch of these up in these little tiny pockets under the rocks but hey fish is a fish and tug is a tug that's what old patrick could say uh, so what is it about this whole vintage anglers vault thing? We're pretty excited about it. Character Cookie and I want to go back and look at old outdoor lives, field and streams, sports of field, study up on an old vintage fishing method, see what kind of lures they're using, what the technique was, see how valid it is today. It'll give us a chance to look through some really classic old vintage articles, share a little bit of that history with you, try that out and test it against some of the techniques today. So this is my first episode. We're gonna, we'll still do a lot of episodes where it's a, our standard adventures and fun and different things we do together as a family. But we're gonna bounce back and forth with this vintage series with some of the things that Cookie and I did when we were young and some of these old lessons from the vintage angler vault back in those old magazines. I hope you enjoy it. We're gonna have a lot of fun doing it. But I need to get back to fishing because old cowboy don't ramble on like this very often. He's a pretty quiet feller. And uh, there's a hole sitting right there in front of me that needs to be fished. Yeah, we're pretty good John up this creek. Now, I'm of, I'm of the mind to keep on going. That's just how I was born and raised. But I do know that my darling bride, Cookie, back home, about now she's probably looking at the watch and wondering whether she needs to send a search and rescue and the highway patrol and the Star Wars Jedi Council and maybe, maybe Scooby-Doo. See if they can figure out where I'm holed up on a rock. Boy, that's just so beautiful. I just, it's hard for me to walk away from it. I'm going to have myself a, a sandwich and another drink, and I got it in my mind that I got to get one more decent fish, and then I probably best turn around so that Cookie doesn't have a conniption fit. Before I wrap this video up, do my last final cast, we ought to probably guess and have a conversation about three flies. No question, they'll care caddis. It probably, I didn't keep count, but I know there was at least four decent ones and 15 or so little ones. Uh, the Renegade had one and uh, about three other hookups that I couldn't get in, nothing big. And of course we already know the Royal Coachman because of losing my fishing vest. It just wasn't part of the equation today. But uh, yeah, let's get them last couple of casts in there. It's about time to call her. Well, we got a couple more little tiny ones there in them ripples, but not that bigger one I was hoping to end on. But still, what an amazing day. Beautiful scenery. Reminiscing about my old days. Thinking about all these times I've hiked up and down this river with an old fly rod and some tie flies that me and Dad tied. Pretty good times. You know what Cookie always says? No matter how rough your day is and how many struggles you're facing, there's always something beautiful. Just gotta look for it. And now, I'm going to attempt to hike up that steep old hill and try and find the trail back. <sighs> the old body said, you know what? You best get on your way, cowboy. Save a little bit of energy for the next one. Here we go, up the hill. That was an adventure. Join us next time on 
another adventure with Picky and the Cow.